Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Jason and in this video I am beginning a new video series for the CompTIA A Plus 220-1101 certification exam. My goal for the series is to help as many people as I can obtain the A Plus certification. There are five domains for this exam, each with their own set of objectives. Here we will begin with Domain 1, Objective 1.1, which focuses on laptop hardware. We will cover storage, displays, batteries, keyboards, and other various laptop components. Feel free to pause when needed, and don't forget that you can always return to this video anytime for review. Let's go ahead and get started. Laptops and desktops have several key differences that impact their performance and usability. One major difference is portability. Laptops are designed to be easily carried around, they feature wireless connectivity, and batteries for use on the go. On the other hand, desktops are obviously less portable and are meant for office settings. Just ask anyone who's had to carry their desktop to a LAN party. Not as easy as a laptop to pack from place to place. In terms of cost, laptops can be more expensive than desktops with similar specifications. When it comes to performance, desktops typically outperform laptops, as laptops prioritize portability over high-end performance. For example, it is possible to purchase a laptop and a desktop with similar or the exact same CPU and GPU specifications. However, the laptop will usually feature the mobile versions of these chips, which allows the laptop battery to last a little bit longer, and it also helps reduce the temps, which is important considering the amount of space these components have for airflow in a laptop case, compared to like that, say, of a desktop. As far as expandability, desktops are easier to upgrade than laptops, as laptops often require external devices for upgrades and often have components that are soldered directly to the motherboard, making upgrades challenging at best for laptops. An example of this would be if you wanted to add more permanent storage to a laptop, then you must have an additional M.2, mini PCIe, or even SATA slot to do so. Not all laptops have room in the case to provide for empty slots for future storage upgrades. Also, like CPUs and GPUs, some laptop manufacturers solder their stores directly to the motherboard. Therefore, using an external USB-C hard drive or SSD is almost a must these days. There are three primary characteristics of mobile devices, field servicing and upgrading, input methods, and secondary storage. Field servicing and upgrading involves working with mobile devices and laptops, which are assembled in unique ways and demand specific repair methods depending on the brand. As a result, each device requires a different approach to repairs, leading to increased complexity overall. Certain laptops come with an SOC, or system on a chip, which is an integrated circuit that consolidates all of the necessary system components onto a single piece of silicon. This means that any component integrated into the SOC, like the RAM, the CPU, or even the GPU, cannot be upgraded. Input methods on tablets and laptops differ slightly. While laptops typically come with trackpads and keyboards, tablets feature multi-touch displays that enable actions like zooming in and out through gestures, such as reverse pinch and pinch. Also, resistive touchscreens rely on pressure from a stylus or a finger for input, and then capacitive touchscreens use electrical conductivity, allowing for your finger to act as a stylus. Laptops and mobile devices typically have less permanent storage compared to desktops due to their smaller size and limited space for components. Also, the permanent storage in mobile devices tends to be more costly per gigabyte. As a result, laptops and mobile devices rely on external devices for extra storage if they need it. When working on a laptop, it is important to check the manufacturer's documentation before attempting any repairs, especially if you are not familiar with a device. Even experienced technicians suggest not to remove any screws until you have the specific documentation for that laptop model. Repair and service manuals are typically available on the manufacturer's website. Some of the more popular manufacturers are listed here for your reference. Also, iFixit is a reliable source for detailed disassembly guides for a wide range of mobile devices. They even offer repair kits that contain the necessary components and tools for completing the repair. When performing a repair or upgrade, it is important to refer to the documentation for a list of the necessary tools that you'll need to make the repair. Make sure that you use the correct tools as specified to avoid any further damage to the laptop. For example, if a T8 Torx driver is required, ensure that you have the correct tool to prevent stripping the screws or causing more damage to the device. When working on or disassembling a laptop, it is important to prioritize organization and documentation. Ensure that there is an assigned space for storing any removed parts and that you have a container or magnetic bowl nearby to keep track of the screws. Technicians often take photos with their phones for documentation purposes, as long as it does not breach any security or privacy policies. And you may even see some of them lay out the screws on the workbench based on the location they were removed. 
When working on or repairing a laptop, you will notice that it consists of three main parts. Usually an LCD or OLED display for display output, some type of metal reinforcement to improve durability, and a plastic or aluminum cover that protects the internal components and circuitry from any external elements. Before you begin working on a laptop or even a desktop, here are some common steps that you need to take to prepare the device. Start by turning it off and disconnecting all external peripherals and cables, including the keyboards, mice, monitors, and network cables. Doing so prevents any damage to those ports and cables that may be in use. Make sure that you also disconnect it from the power source. At no point should you work on a computer while it is still connected to power or even turned on. One of the most underrated components of preparation is your workspace. It should be clear of any clutter and good lighting should also be a priority. Have documentation of that specific laptop or help videos ready for reference and make sure you have all of the necessary tools nearby. Last, to prevent any potential static electricity damage, ground yourself with an ESD strap before beginning any repairs. You may find that you need to add to this list as you develop your own strategy or routine. However, these are the steps that every technician should include in their repair process. Motherboards for laptops differ from those found in other devices, specifically desktops in terms of form factor and the lack of standard sizes. They are specifically designed to fit into small spaces and in many instances, unique cases to ensure that all of the components fit. These motherboards are typically proprietary, created by the manufacturer's requirements, making repairs more challenging and sometimes impossible, unless you have another motherboard from the same laptop model on hand. Daughter boards are slim circuit boards that attach directly to the main motherboard, adding extra functions like video capabilities or input-output functions. Processors and laptops are typically smaller and less powerful than those found in desktops. This is because of the limited space, which often results in laptop CPUs being soldered onto the motherboard making upgrades impossible in most cases. Laptop CPUs can be directly connected to the motherboard, either by being soldered or attached using micro FCBGA or flip chip ball grid array, which is a standard, and it uses balls instead of pins as shown here. To prevent overheating, laptop or mobile CPUs are designed to operate at lower voltages and clock speeds compared to desktop CPUs. This may also result in reduced specs, such as fewer cores and threads. Most laptop CPUs will use active sleep and slowdown modes to conserve battery power, allowing the device to last longer per charge. This process, known as processor throttling, involves the operating system working with the motherboard to regulate the CPU speed based on the usage requirements. Also, laptops will automatically enter sleep mode faster when running on battery power to further extend battery life. A small outline dual inline memory module, or SODIMM, is the industry standard form factor for laptops being much smaller than standard DIMMs to fit in limited internal space that laptops offer. SODIMMs come in various pin configurations, such as DDR with 144 pins, DDR2 with 200 pins, DDR3 with 204 pins, DDR4 260 pins, and then finally DDR5 with 262 pins. Similar to CPUs, SODIMMs can be soldered directly onto the motherboard, which means that they are not easily upgradable, if at all. MicroDIMM is a type of memory module that is more than 50% smaller than SODIMM. It does not feature any keying notches on the bottom and is specifically designed for use in ultralight and portable style notebooks or laptops. The MicroDIMM modules for DDR2 have 172 pins, while those for DDR3 have 214 pins. It is worth noting that MicroDIMM modules for DDR4 and DDR5 have yet to be produced. Data storage for laptops can be achieved by either using hard disk drives or HDDs or solid state drives or SSDs. SSDs are preferred for saving space and generating less heat compared to hard drives, which have spinning platters while SSDs have no moving parts. This makes SSDs, which utilizes flash memory, faster than hard drives, which then rely on magnetic technology. Despite typically offering less storage space in terms of gigabytes, SSDs are commonly used for operating systems and applications that benefit from faster read-write speeds. While hard drives are usually more cost-effective per gigabyte, both SSDs and hard drives utilize SATA data and power connectors. In terms of physical dimensions, standard hard drives are 3.5 inches wide, while SSDs and laptop hard drives are typically 2.5 inches wide. When it comes to hard drive data migration during the replacement or upgrade of a laptop's hard drive or SSD, there are a couple of options to consider. One method involves manually copying specific files from the old hard drive to the new one although this does not transfer settings or any configuration settings. The other side of that, you can use data migration software, which allows you to transfer files, settings, configurations, and even applications from one drive to another, as long as both drives are accessible. As for optical drives, many modern laptops lack internal optical drives due to the lack of space. 
with external options available that can be connected via expansion ports like USB. Keyboards for laptops are typically smaller compared to standard desktop keyboards. The top row of keys on laptop keyboards often serve dual purposes when used with the function keys. They are usually integrated into the case or clamshell design of the laptop. In case of a broken key or spillage onto the keyboard, the entire keyboard unit usually needs to be replaced to resolve the issue or to fix it. Pointing devices are used to control the mouse in the GUI. There are several different types of pointing devices commonly used with laptops. The trackball, which functions about the same as an upside down mouse. The touchpad, where users move their fingers to control the on-screen pointer. The point stick, which uses a small rubber tip stick for directional control and is usually integrated into the keyboard. And the touchscreen, which allows users to interact directly with the screen for input including replicating mouse clicks and enabling zooming functions with pinch and reverse pinch gestures. Laptops do not have as many expandability options as desktops. There are two main types of internal expansions available for laptops, Mini PCIe and M.2. Mini PCIe is the most common slot used for laptop expansion. It is similar to the full size version, but with smaller connectors. These cards are connected via a 52 pin card edge connector. Mini PCIe cards are available in two sizes. Full size measuring at 30 millimeters wide and 51 millimeters long, and half size measuring at 30 millimeters wide and 27 millimeters long. They support USB and PCIe X1 speeds at both 1.5 and 3.3 volts. The M.2 slot is mainly used for hard drives, but can also support other cards like Wi Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, NFC, PCIe, and SATA. It features a smaller connector size with 22 millimeters, but has more pins at 66 pins. M.2 supports USB 2.0 and newer technologies. The slower M.2 slots typically support PCIe by 2, while the M keyed slots can handle PCIe by 4, offering faster speeds compared to many PCIe. Mobile devices are obviously self-contained and can function without cables when necessary, making them portable, but this also means that they can be easily carried off or stolen. To address this security concern, physical privacy and security components can be used to prevent theft. For example, Cable locks, such as the Kensington lock, can be used to securely attach your laptop to a desk or another fixed structure by connecting it to the cable lock hole on the device. Biometrics technology enables users to access their devices or unlock them by using physical characteristics such as facial recognition, fingerprint scanning, voice recognition, and retinal scanning. The implementation of biometrics improves device security because biometric features are distinct and cannot easily be guessed or hacked, unlike passwords. Privacy screens are thin sheets of semi-transparent plastic that decrease the viewing angle, allowing a display to be read from only directly in front of it. Some laptops come with a built-in privacy screen that can be activated using the function keys. These screens help prevent anyone who is walking by your desk from viewing a laptop or desktop monitor in the event sensitive information is being displayed. The Near Field Scanner is widely utilized in modern mobile payment systems due to its quick operation and user-friendly nature. NFC technology has a maximum range of approximately 10 centimeters or 4 inches, making it challenging but not entirely impossible to intercept NFC data. Most current laptops are equipped with internal batteries instead of removable ones. There are several types of batteries commonly used in laptops, including NICAD, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, and the newer lithium polymer. A power adapter is a device that converts AC power input to DC output. It is typically a separate brick with two cords, one that plugs into the back of the laptop and another that plugs into the wall outlet. When replacing the AC adapter, it is important to choose one that is rated for the same or higher wattage. Portable computers can operate on one of two power sources. When connected to an AC power source, it must be converted to DC before being used because laptops require DC to power the internal components. Also, the AC power used for laptop display backlights is converted back to DC using the inverter.